one. Got another comparison video here, this time between the Moto G and the uh, Nexus 5. So uh, these are two uh, excellent value Android phones. Uh, this can be bought for about 100 quid, the 8 gig model. Oh. Uh, and the Nexus 5 can be bought for about 260, 270 now from Amazon. Uh, so well, how do they compare? Well obviously the performance isn't going to be the same between both of them because they're running different hardware. But if someone who's looking to upgrade, is it worthwhile paying a little bit more for the Nexus 5? Or will the Moto G suffice? Well in terms of build quality, neither are going to win awards for aesthetics. But uh, they both feel very solid in the hand. The Moto G uh, fits very snugly in the hand because it's 4.5 inches. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't feel too heavy or too light. Uh, it feels durable, like it could, uh, you know, take a, few, a bit of damage down the line. Uh, it's, uh, it's got uh, these plasticky buttons, which I'm not really a fan of. But other than that, uh, it's uh, functional to do the job. The Nexus 5 has a more rubbery appearance to the plastic feel, uh, but uh, it's very light. It's a bit bigger, obviously, so uh, you're going to have to stretch your thumb a bit, but it's still uh, quite easy to hold and comfortable in the hand, and it feels like it's uh, built to last. Uh, in regards to the actual screen, of both of them, they uh, have a different uh, screen resolution. So the Nexus 5 has a uh, full HD uh, 10 1080 display, uh, which uh, I think uh, at first I was a bit disappointed with. I was expecting something a bit better. Uh, I felt that the colours and contrasts were a bit washed out particularly in comparison to like a Galaxy Note 2 or the uh, HCC one. But uh, after looking at it a bit more, my eyes have got used to it a bit now, and I can see that it is a, a nice display. Not very good outdoors though. I couldn't see anything when, uh, when it was bright sunlight. Uh, but uh, indoors it's perfectly acceptable. On the other hand, the Moto G has a, a decent screen for the price. Uh, I think that the screen is easily like the best in terms of uh, low-end phones uh, and uh, will certainly not disappoint you. It uh, offers good viewing angles and uh, it's uh, very, another thing is it's very readable outdoors for some reason. Uh, in particular, it's much more readable than the Nexus 5. But then again, that could be because uh, the brightness I have it on is higher, because I'm not so worried about the battery. But we can get on to that later. But uh, yeah, I think that the screen is uh, definitely a high point of the Moto G. Uh, in regards to the performance on the... Nexus 5, you have a Snapdragon 800 clocked at 2.2 gigahertz, or is it 2.3? Uh, one of the two, and it's got two gigs of RAM, so uh, no issues with performance on the uh, Nexus 5. Coupled with the stock software, it's blindingly fast uh, and uh, offers a great uh, performance. But uh, the, the Moto G obviously has uh, Snapdragon 400, which is uh, an A7 uh, architecture, uh, clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. So uh, it's going to be a little bit slower in terms of the performance, but then again, it's still extremely fast compared to some last generation phones, and you're not going to have any issues with it. Uh, I think uh, in terms of raw performance, the Nexus will probably be a little bit faster to do things, but uh, you're not really going to notice the difference, really.
So yeah, a little bit faster, but uh, not really that big of a deal. Um, in regards to the uh, connectivity, the Nexus 5 has uh, more connectivity options, such as your 4G, your NFC. Uh, it's uh, got uh, Chromecast as well built into it. So uh, you've got more options uh, if you want uh, like a faster data speed when you're out and about. As well, if you want to take advantage of uh, Google Google Wallet, uh, on the Moto G, however, you only have uh, the HSPA data technology, so no 4G or NFC. Uh, but I don't think uh, the majority of users looking for this sort of phone would be that bothered, uh, and it can only help battery life having no 4G. Uh, in regards to the storage, this has 16 gigs, but can be bought in 32 gig models and 64 gigs. This can only come in 8 and 16 gig models. I've got the 8 gig model because I don't keep much on my device, so it's not really a big issue for me. Both are not expandable, so uh, that's uh, a bit of a pity. Uh, in regards to the camera technologies, camera on the Nexus 5 uh, is a 8 megapixel optical image stabilization camera with HDR plus uh, the pictures it does take uh, could be considered very good uh, not the best obviously but uh, much better than uh, some of the Nexus 4 for example uh, which had a very mediocre camera there were some issues with the camera uh, at first with the Nexus 5, but Google has resolved that. Uh, it offers some basic options such as uh, blurring of the lens, panorama, uh, as well as shooting in full HD. Um, but uh, it's a bit sparse compared to some other smartphones. The Moto G, however, has a very basic camera with a very basic interface. Uh, it uh, will get the job done, but don't. Uh, if you're a shutter bug, then probably best not to, to take too much. Uh, uh, rely on it too much, and probably best to take a dedicated camera. But uh, it sh shoots in 720p, so uh, it's not too bad. Uh, in regards to the battery life of both of them, uh, the battery on this is a 2,300. MAH and the battery on the Moto G is a 2000 so uh, they're not going to give epic battery life by any means but uh, I was quite surprised at how good the battery life is on the uh, Moto G for saying it's just 2000 uh, it could be due to the processor and the smaller screen but uh, for, for one reason or another, it just seems to go on and on and on. Uh, I have switched to Art as well on uh, the Moto G, which seems to have also increased the battery life. Uh, but uh, no one's going to have any issues with battery life on the Moto G. Whereas the Nexus 5 uh, can be more temperamental. Uh, sometimes it can uh, perform really well, the battery. Uh, but then other times it can kind of drain quite quickly, particularly if you're using Google Plus or uh, the camera, uh, because there's some known issues that Google have yet to fix where uh, the camera processors carry on running as well as Google Plus. So uh, if you reboot the phone every time you use these things, you shouldn't have an issue until they fix it. But uh, in general, the battery life should get you through a day on the Nexus 5. Uh, but uh, don't expect miracles from it. Uh, unlike the, G the LG G2, it's uh, quite mediocre. So, uh, yeah, um, I think they're both uh, excellent devices uh, in their own respects. Uh, I think that for the majority of people, the Moto G would uh, be sufficient for their usage, but if you need something with a slightly better camera, 
uh, as well as uh, like better performance all around and a bigger screen, then it's worthwhile investing in the Nexus. Uh, there is one, only one thing that I'm a bit worried about with the Nexus is that uh, I was playing around with it the other day and it uh, slid off a chair and dropped onto my carpet. And uh, I've noticed that it's actually damaged the screen. Uh, so as you can see here, it's got uh, a little crack there, crack scratch. Uh, so uh, it's not big damage, but uh, I'm a bit worried in case it uh, expands across the phone. And I was expecting the Gorilla Glass 3 to be tougher. So uh, yeah, just be aware of that. Uh, the, the, the glass may not be as tough as the rest of the phone. Uh, but uh, I've had my Moto G for quite a while now and uh, I've roughed it up and uh, I've bashed it with gym weights and everything. It looks just as good as new. Uh, there's absolutely no cracks or scratches on the screen. So uh, if you're looking for something to bash up a bit, then the Moto G may be the better choice. But yeah, they both, uh, as I said, offer excellent value. And uh, it seems that Android uses a sport for choice nowadays. So this has been a uh, comparison review of the Nexus 5 and Moto G. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.